Hey, what's up? Welcome back to uh, this new video. This one is paper 2 1 of May and June 2020 for Math paper 2. Uh, now, with that being said, obviously, let's move on to the questions. As we know already, we have a list of formulas we can use for this paper, but as well, we can use also use our calculator to kind of calculate uh, the questions along the way. Now, right, let's move on to question number one. Uh, so, here we have to solve the equation 5 power of w minus 1 equal to 12. Now, giving your answers correct to two decimal places, so you kind of know, you kind of know already, your answer will not be exact because the question tells you to give your answer correct to two decimal places, right? Uh, now, usually what uh, we have is something like this. Let's first ignore that. Um, let me uh, give you, you the thought process of usually what do we think about. For example, let's say we had 5 power w minus 1 equal to 25. In this case, it will be kind of different from this one. Why? Because usually we would say, okay, here we have 5, here we have 25, but we also know five, 25 is 5 power 2. So we will try to convert them into the same base as this one. So this is usually what we will do. But in this case, as you can see, it's not possible. We have 12 over here. So obviously, it's nothing in terms of power 5. So we will have to go with the logarithm option. For example, I can apply ln on both sides, ln of 5 power this and ln of 12, okay? Now by using the laws of logarithms, I can send this one to the beginning. That will become w minus 1 multiplied by ln of 5 equal to ln of 12. So w minus 1 will be ln of 12 divided by ln of 5. Again, you can use log as well. It's up, it's up to your preference. You can use ln or log, okay? Nothing uh, restricts you with that. So finally, w will be ln of 12 over ln of 5 plus 1. Okay, so let's see what is that value. So ln of 12 divided by ln of 5 plus 1. That should be 2.54 correct to two decimal place. And this is your answer for question part A. Now for part B, we have to solve the equation. Let's see how can we solve that equation. So what can we observe here? We can rewrite this as such. This is x power 1 over 3 square. Makes sense, right? This is 5 x power 1 over 3 and plus 6. Now we can try to use a substitution to help us solve this, uh, this question. For example, I can say let y equal to x 1 over 3. So this will become y square minus 5y plus 6. So now we simply have a simple quadratic equation we can factorize or solve by using your formula, right? That will be y times y, 6 is 3 times 2. To get minus 5, I have to have minus 2, minus 3. And then I have to check, minus times minus is plus, so here we have plus, we are good to go. So this will be uh, your factorization, y will be 2, and y will be 3. But again, we're not trying to find y, we're trying to find the value of x. So we have x, 1 over 3, is 2, or x, 1 over 3, is 3. Now, if you want to make this become x, we have to apply the power of 3, but you have to apply on both sides, obviously, if you want to do that. So, power of 3, power of 3. Why? Because we want this to become x. That will be x, and that will be 8. x will be 27. So, we have these two options as your answer for question part b. Now, let's move on to question number 2. So, we have to write this down as a single logarithm to the base of 10. So we have to know a few laws here. So if in case you guys don't know, let's say I have log to the uh, value of a plus log b, that is simply log a b. Let's say we have log a minus log b, that will be log a divided by b. So these are the two options for that. Now the same way over here, uh, we have this and that. So first thing we can do, we can send this one to the top. Make sense? We have this x square. 
So we have to know this law as well as we have used in part one. This we could have placed this in the beginning or we can send this back to the top. It's up to you, right? So in this case, it's easier if you do that. That will be the case. Now, if you have to minus, if we combine those two, they have the same log, so that'll be log. We have x plus 6. And here we have plus, so plus we have to multiply, multiply by 3. Here you go. And that will be log x squared. Here we have minus, become divide by, the value inside will be 3x plus 18. So this is your answer for part A to express as a single log. Now for part B, we have to solve the equation, hence solve the equation. Hence, it means we have to use part 1 to solve part B. Now we have just seen this whole thing transform into this. So let the rest, let's write this down. So what is this one? This is simply log to the base of 10, right? Same thing. It represents that. This is x squared over the value of 3 x plus 18 has to be 0. Now to solve this, obviously we have to know something. For example, let's say I had log to the base of 10, x equal to 0. To find the value of x, I have to send the base right here. It become x equal to 10 power 0. So similarly, using the same logic, to find the value inside, this value inside, we have to send the base on the other side. That will become 10 power 0. Now anything power 0 is 1, so that will be 1. So we can just cross multiply. You will have x squared is equal to 3x plus 18. So x squared will be minus 3x minus 18 has to be 0. Now we can solve this using factorization, obviously, because it is a quadratic function. Again, it depends. You can use your formula or you can use factorization if you prefer. Now, what is 18? We have to choose two uh, the factors. So 18 is 1 times 18. It could be 2 times 9 or it could be 3 times 6. Now, we have to have minus 3. So let's choose something relevant. We can choose this one. We can choose this will be x times x, obviously, and this will be 6 times 3. Now, to get minus 3, I have to have minus 6 plus 3. So x will be the value of 6 x will be the value of minus 3. So finally, x can only be b6. Why? Because obviously log can only take positive value. So because of that, it cannot take negative value. So this will not be valid. Only value will be 6 for question number 2. Now let's move on to question number 3. So variables x and y are such that when, uh, when we have a root, cubic root of y is against x squared, a straight line passing through the points, we have the passing points already, is obtained. We have to find y as a function of x. So to find the equation of a straight line, we have to find its gradient. How do you find the gradient? We have to use the passing point. Usually what we do, we take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is minus 7 over the value of 8. But let's check, right? Uh, 7 actually, my bad. 7, that will be 7. So the gradient will be minus 1. Now we do understand that the equation of a straight line usually is y equal to mx plus c. This is when y is against x usually. But now in this case we have root, cubic root of y m against x squared plus c. So the equation of the line will be cubic root of y equal to m is minus, then it will be x squared plus c. Now we have to find the value of c by using one of those points. So let's use, um, which one do you want? Let's use this one. That will be 16, 1. This is my value of, you can choose either one, doesn't uh, really matter. Again, in this case, because we're using the, the variables, this against this, we understand this will be x squared, and this will be root of y instead of the usual x and y. Right, so replace back, you will have, this is equal to 1, this will be minus 16 plus c. So c will be 17. So finally, we uh, conclude that what? We have cubic root of y is equal to minus x squared plus 17. Now we have to express y as a function of x. 
So to make this become, so we have to understand something is cubic root of something is actually the something power 1 over 3. Now to make this become y, I have to apply power 3. That will be apply power 3 on both sides. So you have y is equal to minus x squared plus 17 power 3. And this is your answer for expressing y as a function, so y as a function of x. Great. Now let's move on to part 4 of your question. The polynomial uh, p of x is equal to this, so we have an ex equation, p of x equal to this. Now, as you can see, this one is a cubic curve, right? So we have x power 3. Uh, it has a factor of this. Now, it means that if we uh, divide by this, the remainder will be 0. But for what value? The value, to find the value, we just equate that equation, that linear factor, to 0. So when the value of x is 3, we have no remainder. So remainder will be 0, which means if p of x, taking the value of 3, it will be 0. So use that equation to form an equation. Replace the value of x by 3, you will have m. 3 power 3 will be 27, minus 17 times 9, plus 3, and plus 6 have to be 0, according to your question. Now we have to simplify, that will be 27m. Um, so I think we can do something here, is we can divide by 3 everywhere, right? You will have 3 here, go away. 3 will go away, and this will become 2, and this will become 9. Okay, so you will have what? You will have 9m minus, so 17 times 3, that will be 51, plus n plus 2 equal to 0. You will have 9m plus n minus 49 is equal to 0, so n will be the value of 49 minus 9m. This is my equation number one. Again, if that's confusing you right here, we can always proceed the same way, which is I can add them one by one. So we have 27m minus, so 17 times 9, that will be 153 plus 3n plus 6. So these two will be together. So 153 plus 6, that will be 147. So 27m plus 3n is equal to 147. Divide by 3 everywhere, you will have 9m plus n is equal to 143 divided by 3, that should be 49. So you have the same thing in the end, okay? So this is my equation number 1. Now, moving on, it has a remainder of minus 12 when divided by this. Now what is the value of x here? We take this factor, not factor actually, this linear equation, we equate that to 0, which means the value of x have to be minus 1. So which means when your function p of x, taking the value of minus 1, we will have minus 12 as the remainder. Right. Now let's move on. So let's try to find the other equation, replace, and see what happens. So p of minus 1 will be minus uh, 1 cubed times m, right? Minus 17 minus 1 squared plus and times minus 1 plus 6 have to give you the value of minus 12. This will give you minus m, uh, minus 17, minus n, plus 6 have to be minus 12. So that will give you minus m, minus n, and that will be the value of, let's send everything to this side. Let's see what happens. You have minus 12, minus 6, plus 17. So when you send the numbers on this side, the sign will change become a minus 1. So let's flip side, you will have m plus n has to be 1, right? Same thing as this. Now this is my equation number 2. Now we have the three equations, uh, let's see what is the uh, value, what are the values of m and n in this case. So let's do that. So n is equal to this, we place back in the equation, so n, m plus n, n is also equal to 49, minus this is equal to 1. So you will have this minus this will be, sorry, m minus this will become minus 8m is equal to 1 minus 49. Minus 8m is equal to minus 48, so divide, you will have the value of 6. 
minus 48 divided by minus 8 should be 6. m will be 6, so n will be 49 minus 9 times 6. 49 minus 9 times 6, that should be minus 5. According to the equations, again, uh, we have to double check um, all the time. When I do this kind of questions, if I was in an exam situation, I will double check just to make sure that I don't have anything uh, suspicious going on, so I don't make any mistakes. Now, <laughs> let's move on to my main question. So from here, I know P of X has to be M, which is the value of 6, X cubed, minus uh, 17 X squared, minus 5 X plus the value of 6, right? So right now we have the value of P of X. Now from here, I need to find the remainder when P of X is divided by this, which means when this is my divisor, what is the value of X? We equate that to 0, so when X is equal to 2, I want to find what is the remainder of my polynomial. So replace the value of X by 2. 6, 2 cubed minus 17 times 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus 6. That will be 6 times 8 minus 17 times 4 minus 10 plus 6. Solve. 6 times 8 minus 17 times 4 minus 10 plus 6. That will be minus 24 as your answer for the remainder of this polynomial. And that is your question number 4. So let's move on to question number five. So what do we have in this question? So here we have to do what? Write in ascending powers of x the first three terms in this expansion. So let's try. So we have power of n. n combination, we have zero here. That will be one for x. This will match this one. And n minus this will be just n. Now plus n combination two. Right, and that will be 1, and that will be 4x. That will be 1, actually. That will be 1 over here. That will be n minus 1. And then here we have n combination 2. And we have this. That will be 2 here, and that should be n minus 2. So here we have 1. So anything combinations here will be 1. This will become 1, and that will be 1. Plus, this is n combination 1. And this will become 1, that will be 4x. Here we have n combination 2, that will be just uh, 1, and that will become 16x squared. Now obviously we can use the list of formula here to simplify this further. As you can see, we have the answer right here. How do you simplify this? So, if it's n choose 1, that will be n combination 1 is equal to n factorial over the value of, again, I'm just using the formula right here to simplify this. If you have enough practice, you would know it by heart already, but if you don't, no big deal, just use this right here, right? That will be n factorial over n minus 1 factorial times r, which is 1 factorial. Now, what is 1 factorial? Yeah, you have to, I mean, you can just check, it is just 1. So this basically doesn't really matter, but the rest we can simplify. For example, how do you simplify this? We understand that n factorial is equal to n times n minus 1 factorial, right? So this will cancel out if you realize that will become n times n minus 1 factorial over n minus 1 factorial times 1. So this and this will cancel out. You will have n. So that will be 1 plus n times 4x. Now what is this one? So let's try to find out. Same again, um, we've done this just to show you guys how would you proceed if you guys don't remember anything at all. You will use the formula right there and then try to simplify this. So this one again, same steps. You will have n combination 2 is equal to n factorial over the value of n minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial, right? According to your formula. Now I'll simplify. This will become what? As you can see, this is, we can also express press this as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial. So on top you will have remaining n minus 1 minus 2 factorial over the value of 
and minus 2 factorial. Now what is 2 factorial? 2 factorial is simply the value of, of 2. Right? So this and this will cancel out. So you will have n times n minus 1 over the value of 2. So become n times n minus 1 over the value of 2 times 16x squared. Simplify. Uh, this and this will go away. This becomes 8 over here. Uh, you will have 1 plus 4nx. And here you will have plus 8 n times n minus 1 x squared. Again, this is your first three terms of this expansion. You have something like that. Now let's move on to the other questions. So in the expansion of this, times this, again this is simply this right here, the coefficient of x squared is this, find the value of n. So let's try to find out, let's try to find the term in x squared. If I were to expand this, I will take what? This is the value right here, which is 1 plus 4nx plus 8n and minus 1 x squared, right? And this is 1, blah, 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 here you go. Now again, I only care about the term in x squared, so for the first term, I'll take 1 times which one? Times this one, right? To get something in x squared, that will be 8n and minus 1 x squared. Now here we have minus 4x. Multiply which one of them to get something in x squared? Multiply this one, 4nx. Again, this is just to find the term in x squared. The rest doesn't really matter for now. So you will have 8n and minus 1 x squared minus 16nx uh, squared. So we can simplify, obviously, that will become 8 n square minus 8 n, right? That will be square right here, minus 16 n x square. Simplify, we can factorize the x square outside, you will have 8 n square minus 8 n minus 16 n, and that will become this term right here. Now, we understand that this is supposed to be this one, so we know we're supposed to get 6,000 32x squared. So by comparing coefficients, this and this are supposed to be the same thing. So we have 8n squared minus, so what is minus 8 minus 16? Let's double check. I'll be minus 24. And it's supposed to get you this one. So simplify and everything to one side. You will have this, minus 24n minus 60, 32 has to be 0. Now we can simplify, divide everyone by 8. Let's try. That will become n squared minus 3n minus 60, 32 divided by 8. That will be 754 equal to 0. So I do not know the factors of this number. I can use factorization, obviously. But I can try to use just the formula directly just to see what can I get, right? So n will be minus b, which is 3, plus minus root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. And then everything divided by 2a, which is just 2. So 9 minus 4 times 1 times minus 754. That will be this one, and root of this will be 55. So 3 plus minus 55 over 2. So from here I can find the value of n. n has to be positive. So we will just negate, we'll just not take into account the negative value. So there will be 3 plus 55 over 2, which is 58 over 2, and that will be what? 29. So 29 will be your value of n for this one. Again, in this example, we only care about the term in x squared. Once we have that, we compare the coefficients, and then we try to solve to find the value of n. And let's move on to question part b. Now, find the term independent of x. So independent of x means term having no x. Now, one way of solving this is obviously you can expand the whole thing, and then you check which one has no x. Or we can be uh, a bit wiser to see what can we do. Usually, how would you expand this? You will take the power of 10. We have power here. Combination something. Let's call this uh, n. And we have the first term, which is x over 2 and then minus 8 over x power 4. 
Now, obviously this will be n here and this will be 10 minus n. Now, I have to choose n in such a way when I apply them to my uh, values over here, the x will go away. So what n can I choose? We can test. Again, n can be the value between 0, 1, until 10. So between those values, because we have power of 10, we can choose n between those values. Now for which value of n, this will, the x will disappear. So we can try by trial. Let's think. If you choose n to be the value of, let's say for example, 2, right? Let's see what happens. 10, choose 2. Now be x over 2, minus 8 over x power 4. We have 2 here, and this will become 8. So what is 10 choose 2? That will be 45. That will be x power 8 over 2 power 8. That will be 2, 5, 6. Now 8 power 2, that will be 64 over x power 8. You agree? Now in that case, clearly you can see this will go away. So you have 45 times 64 over 2, 5, 6. That will be 11, 1 quarter for your answer for the term which is independent of x. Again, this is the, done by trial. So basically you try in your head or you can try on paper to see which one works out. The value of n is between 0 and 10 because the power is 10. That's the maximum you can go to. That is your question uh, number 5. Now let's move on to question number 6. Uh, part 1. We have a 5-digit number is to be formed from the 7 digits. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to, to use to form a 5-digit number. Now, each number can be used only at most once. Can be used once or less than one, so 0 times. And the number do not start with zero. So this is one of the conditions we have to keep in mind. It cannot start with a zero. Now, find the number of ways in which this can be done. So let me write this down. We have zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? These are the numbers that we have. And we wish to form a five digit number. So we have to have five space. One, two, three, four, five. So for the first space, what number can I choose? So I can choose, we cannot choose 0 because it cannot start with 0. So we have one option, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 options, 6 options. Let's say I choose 1. Now for this one, I can choose the remaining 6 options. I'll have 6 options. Let's say I choose 0. Remaining 5 options. Let's say I choose 2. Remaining 4 options. Let's say I choose 3. Remaining three options, let's say I choose four. So your answer will be six times six times five times four times three. Times three. That'll be 21, 60 for your answer in part one. Now for part two, um, how many of these numbers, of these five digit numbers are even? So from this list, how many are even? So this one could be tricky if you do them if you do them together because we have uh, a situation where it cannot start with zero, but zero is also an indication where your number is even. For example, let's say I tell you I write 22. You would say this is obviously an even number. Why? Because it ends with an even number. If I write 23, it is not even because it ends with an odd number. So that's how we think about these kind of questions for permutation. Um, to find those uh, to find those numbers, right? So we have to think of this in this way. So again, same steps. Let me do it step by step. So first case scenario. Let's say our number ends with zero. First case scenario. So so it can be even, right? So I have zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Five digit numbers, five space, one, two, three, four, five. Right. If my number ends with zero, I put zero here, I have only one zero, that will be one option. Right. Now, for this one, I can choose any one of them, that will be six options. There will be remaining five options, remaining four options, remaining three options. So case number one, if your number ends with zero, this will be 
number of numbers that we can form. 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 1. That will be 360. Now, for it to be uh, even, my number can also end with, you would say from the list, it can end with 0, it can end with 2, 4, and 6. So let's try. What if my number ends with 2? Make a list, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, here you go. Ends with 2. 2 right here, I have only one 2, that is only one option. Now for the first one, how many options will I have? I cannot put 0, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 options. 5 options, right? Let's say I choose 1, and this one I will have remaining 5 options again. Let's say I choose 0, then 4 options, then 3 options. Right, so for this one, if I end with 2, I will have 5 times 5, times 4, times 3, times 1. That will be 300. Now, continue, right? So we have 2. The next even number is 4 and 6. So, here you go. 1 by 1 ends with 4. So same way, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Space, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If you end with 4, I put 4 here, I have only one 4, only one option. I cannot start with 0, I have only the other 5 options to choose from, 5 options, let me choose 1. Then I have, then I can use 0 obviously, I have remaining 5 options, let me choose 0, then 4 and 3. As you can see, if you end with a 4, you also have the same thing as this one. So similarly, if you end with 6, you will also have 300. So what is the total uh, number of numbers that we have? So it will be 300 times 1, 2, 3, times 3, plus 360. That will be 1, 2, 6, 0. So your answer will be 1, 2, 6, 0 for the numbers of, of uh, for the how many of these five digit numbers, um, how many of these one, or even, we will be 1, 2, 6, 0. Again, again, in this case, when you have a combination of things, for example, 0 is also even, but we also know we cannot start with 0. We have to look at this separately and then uh, add them up one by one. Um, look at the cases, which makes sense, obviously, because everything is kind of logical here. If it makes sense, it's good, right? So that will be uh, part A of your question. Now for part B, we have a, a team of seven people is to be selected from a group of nine women and six men. Okay, so we have nine women and six men. Now we have to find the number of different teams that can be selected, which include at least one man. At least one man. Okay, so there's two ways of doing this question. Um, we want to select seven people. If he has at least one man, we could say has one man, two men, three, four, five, six. These are the uh, options we can have for men, right? So the idea is we could we could we could use uh, a different way of thinking. Again, this is one of the option to 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 do this. I could, I guess let me make a table because it will make more sense in that way. I have six men. I have nine women. I need to choose seven people. At least one have to have one to begin with. At least one. It means I can have six. Uh, I can have two. That have to be five. Three. That have to be four. Four have to be three. Five have to be two. And six have to be one. You can look at those cases one by one. Add them up. You will have your answer as well. This is one of the way of doing the question. Or you can think uh, differently. You can say, I can find the total number of groups that can be formed. That will be 9 plus this will be 15. Combination, um, what? Combination 7. This is the total number of groups that can be formed. I can minus the number of groups where we have 0 men. So that the remaining groups will have at least 1 man. 
that makes sense. Again, this is one of the way of doing this, the easier way. And this is the other way where we can think differently so that we don't have to write a lot. So we can first find the total number of groups that can be formed, right? So the, the total set. Now I can say, let me take the total thing minus the group, which is opposite of this, which is, so what is the opposite, opposite of having at least one man? It's having zero men in the group. So zero men will be from nine women, we choose the seven. In this group, we have zero men. So we remove that, that will be what? 15 choose seven minus nine choose seven. That should be six, three, nine, nine as your answer for part B of your question. This is one of the ways you can always go step by step to find the answer as well. Now let's move on to part C of your question. We have to show that this equal to this for n is equal to more than a three. Again, if you guys don't know how to expand this, uh, you do have a formula sheet to help you with that. Let me show you guys the sheet. It's right here, right? So this one. So how would you guys simplify this? So again, same way. If I have n combination three, so this is simply n factorial over n minus three factorial times three factorial. Now we do as uh, we have seen this before, but let me do this, do this again. Uh, we do understand that n factorial can be what? n factorial can be n times n minus one times n minus two times n minus three factorial. So which means if you were to replace this by this on top, so this and this will cancel out. You will have only remaining n times n minus one times n minus two over the value of 3 factorial, which is what? 3 factorial, that is 6. Now let's move on uh, for this one. n combination 2. That will be n factorial over n minus 2 factorial and 2 factorial. So similarly, by comparing, if I had uh, this one here, I will stop right here. So you have only this, right? You will have n times n minus 1. 2 factorial will be the value of 2. Now you can obviously replace back in your equation. Let's see what do we have. So you will have on one side, you will have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 6 plus n times n minus 1 over 2. Now we have to simplify to show this is true. Um, how can we do this? So let me first make them become the same base, which is one over six. I have to multiply by three here, multiply by three, because I need to make this become six. And if you multiply the base, you also have to multiply the top. So it becomes, so it's the same, it doesn't change the fraction itself. That's the reason why. So you will have n times n minus one, n minus two, and then plus three n, n minus one over the value of six. Now simplify. Here we have n times n minus one. Here we have n times n minus one. We can factorize. So n times n minus one will be outside and inside you will have n this plus the value of what? Of three. Let's see what we get. So you will have over six. And here you will have what? Simplify to n times n minus 1, and this will be n plus 1 over 6. Now, as, as we have, uh, we should know, this is the uh, difference of squares. That will be n squared minus 1, right? This will simplify to this one. It is the uh, difference of squares, if that makes sense. So you will have n times n squared minus one over six, which is equal to n cubed minus n over six, which is simply the same thing as one over six times n cubed minus n. Again, the, I guess the only thing we have to uh, take into account here will be this one, n minus one times n plus one. So as we have seen, when it is a minus b times a plus b, 
it is simply the difference of the squares. So same way, this will give you this. So this, expand, you will have this. So this is shown as required. Okay, so this is part one. Now part two, hence, hence we have to solve the equations. Hence, meaning we have to use part A to solve this one. So in part A, we have realized we have this. Part A, we have, we had this. We had uh, n times n squared minus 1 over the value of 6 has to be 4n. Okay, now obviously, uh, cross multiply. You will have n n squared minus 1 is 24n, right? So these two we can just cancel out. Both n, you will have n squared minus 1 will be 24. n squared will be 25. n will be plus minus root of 25. That will be plus minus 5. But eventually, we know that n has to be more than or equal to 3. So n has to be the value of 5. And that is your question uh, number 6. Now let's move on to question number seven. So we have variables x and y such that y is equal to this equation. So basically means y is equal to this over this. That's the equation for y. Now we have to use differentiation. So using differentiation to find the approximate change in y. Approximate change in y. When the value of x increases from this to this. Now the change in x, you would say, is obviously equal to h. So to solve this, really, uh, we just have to know the, uh, the formula, which is this is equal to dy by dx at the value of x is equal to 1.9, which is the initial value, multiplied by the change in x, which is just h. Okay, so step by step, let's see what we can do uh, for this question. So, we have to find the differentiation. So, we can definitely help ourselves first. What is d by dx of the value on top? Let's find out. d by dx of that. So, we have power first multiplied by the power. You have 1 plus sine 3x. Then minus 1 becomes 3, right? And then multiply by d by dx of the value inside. That will be just cos 3x times 3. So this will become uh, 12, 1 plus sine 3x power 3 cos x, cos 3x actually, yeah. So this will be d by dx of the value on top. Now what is d by dx of this one? So we do understand that root of x is equal to x power half. Now what is d by dx of that? It is first times the power and the minus 1, that will become minus half. There you go. Okay. So now we have to differentiate the whole thing. So dy by dx is what? So we have to use the uh, quotient rule because it is a um, one uh, function here divided by the other one. So we can use uh, the quotient rule. So first thing first, we have to write down the base as it is. There you go. Multiply by d by dx of the top value, you will have this, which is 12, 1 plus sine 3x power 3 cos 3x. And then minus, now we leave this one as it is, which is 1 plus sine 3x power 4, multiply by d by dx of this one, which is a half. Now we can send this below to make this become positive. We'll have this. And then we take the whole thing, we uh, divide divide by square of the base, so square this will be x. Now obviously you can uh, you can try to um, try to uh, simplify this or you can directly try to solve dy by dx at the value of x equal to 1.9. So let's try that. So let's replace the value and see what happens. So for the first one here, I have 12. So I have 12 root of 1.9. First one. Multiply by 1 plus sine of 3 times 1.9. Power 3. Multiply by. 
So again, now I have to use, so I made a mistake here, why? Because the values of x is 1.9, is in terms, it's, it is not in terms of degrees, so we have to use radians. So just to make sure you have the right mode here to solve this question. So root 12 root of 1.9, multiply by one plus sine of three times 1.9 power three, times the value of cos of three times 1.9. You have one point. So for this first one here, I do see, uh, I see it becomes 1.2524. Then minus this one over here becomes 1.1 1 .1 plus sine 3 times 1.9 power 4 divided by 2 times 1.9. And this you should get this value 0 0.01478. Then finally, all this divided by 1.9 for the value of x, right? So let's see what do we have for this calculation. So minus 0 0.01478 divided by 1.9. So this will give you 0 0.651379. Now obviously I need to find the uh, value of this one, which is the approximate change in y. This is what we are trying to find, right? It is equal to dy by dx at x equal to this, which is 0 0.6. 5, 1, correct to 3 SF, multiplied by the change in X, which is just this one. So your answer will be this as your value. So the main takeaway here is really, we just have to know this formula right here to solve this question. That was the main takeaway for question number seven. Now let's move on to question number eight. So in this question, I is a unit vector in due S, which is in this uh, direction. And j is a unit vector due north, which is north. Obviously, north is up, right? Now, distances are measured in km, okay, km, and time is measured in hours. This is given to you by the question. Now, at this time, at 9 a.m., uh, we have a ship A leaves a point with a position vector. Now, a position vector is a vector relative to point O, which means OP, the initial position of the ship A was... 5i plus 16j. That was the initial position. Now it sails with a constant speed of 6 or 3, which is the magnitude of that vector, on a bearing of 120 degrees. Now, part one, we have to show the velocity vector of a is given to you by this. So let's try to find this step by step. Now, to find the velocity vector, I have to use the magnitude, I have to use the bearing. Now, the bearing is used to find the direction of, of the ship at which, at which it is going. So bearing will always start with a no flying, and we use a horizontal plane to help us uh, find that angle to see what happens. Now, how would you measure 120? You would say that will be 90. 120 will be somewhere over here, right? So the ship will be sailing in this direction. Now, if this whole thing here is 120, this is 90, it means this is the value of 30, right? Because the whole thing is 120 minus 90, which is the right angle, that will be 30. Now, we do know the magnitude is given to you by 6 root 3. So we have to use that information to find the vector, which is in the i direction and j direction. So pretty easy. Once we have that, once we have this one, so once we have the plane and the direction and the angle right here we can find that pretty easily that'll be six root three now we have to break this down into two pieces one is this one which is the horizontal plane the horizontal value and the vertical value for the vector now what is this value it is six root three cos of 30 now again so whenever you have uh, this side, which is closest to the angle, we'll call this cos of the angle uh, that we have. Now, this one will be obviously 6 root 3 sine of 30. So if one is cos, the other one will be sine. Now, the vector will be what? 
we have to use the uh, direction. So I will be right here, that'll be 6 root 3 cos 30i. And then because this is going down, it will become minus. Again, we assume up to be positive. If this is going down, that will be negative 6 root 3 sine of 30j. Now, um, we have to simplify, obviously, what is cos of 30 and what is sine of 30. So we do know sine of 30 is equal to half, right? We can check. Sine of 30 is equal to the value of, we use degrees, half. Now, what is cos of 30? So with practice, you guys would know, cos of 30 should also give you an exact value. So cos of 30 will be this, which is root 3 over 2. Okay, so root 3 over 2 for cos of 30. You can check. So the answer is this. If you take root 3 divided by 2, also the same thing. Now replace this one back here. You will have root 3 over 2. And this is half. Right? So multiply. Right? You will become. This will go away. This will become 3. This will become uh, go away. This will become 3. So 3 times root 3 times root 3. That will become. 9 and this is i and then we have minus and this will become uh, 3 root 3 j so here you go this is your vector which is the v equal to 9i minus 3 root 3 j shown as required so there's two steps here first step was to find these direction second step was to simplify to find that value now for part b we have to find the position vector of a at 12 now, we do know that the ship A, it uh, sailed at 9 a.m. At 12, it would have traveled for three hours, right? Well, that makes sense. So what is the position vector? Position vector of A, position of A will be what? We have to take into account the initial position was given to you by, uh, let me write this, uh, write this down in this way. Let me not use vectors because we have everything in this way. So initial position was 5i plus 16j. And then we travel for 3 hours. So 3 hours times the velocity, which is 9i minus 3 with 3j. Here you go. Now, obviously, you can expand and simplify, but that should be OK as well uh, for your answer. I mean, I would recommend expanding and simplifying, but I'm sure you guys can do this part, right? So let's see. So 5i plus 3 times this. 3 times 9 is 27 plus 5. That will be 32i. And then we have 16 plus 3 times minus 3. So here we have 3 times this will be plus 16 minus 9 root 3j. And this will be your position vector of, um, of A at 12. Now for part C of your question, um, at 11 o'clock, ship B leaves point Q with the initial position of this. Okay? Now it sails with a constant velocity. It gives you the velocity already, which is this one. Good. Write down the position vector of B T hours after it starts sailing. So pretty easy. That will be what? The initial position, 29i plus 16j plus t hours, so t hours times the velocity will be 0i minus 12 root 3j. So this is your answer for the position of b after it starts sailing, t hours after it starts sailing. Now for part b, uh, d, what do we have? We have to find the distance between the two ships at 12. Okay, so I do know that at 12, A is here, at this position. But what is the position of B? You would say at 12, since it starts at 11, at 12, it will be, sail it will, it will be have sailed for only one hour, right? 11 to 12 is only one hour. So the position of B, that would be 29i plus 16j plus 1 times this will become minus 12 root 3j. That will become... 29i 16 minus 12 root 
j. This is the position vector of, of b. Now to find the distance between b and a, we have to find the difference between those uh, positions and then find the magnitude. So let's do that. That will be uh, this vector. We can take this one. That will be 29, 16, minus 12, root 3, minus the other one, which is 32, 16, minus 9, root 3. So 29 minus 32, that should be minus 3. And this one will be 16, 16 minus 16, this will cancel out. Minus 12 plus 9 should be minus uh, 3 with 3. Again, this is not the answer. This is just the uh, difference among those distances. Now, to find the magnitude, the magnitude, which is the actual distance, magnitude, we have to just square the values inside. Root, that will become 9. Minus 3 squared is 9 plus, that will be 9 times 3. That should be 36. And that will be 6 km. Why? Because it tells you here, distance are measured in km. So 6 km will be the answer for this question. Okay, and that will be your question number 8. Now let's move on to question number 9. So in this question, all the length are meters. That's good to know. The diagram shows a water container in the shape of a triangular prism. As you can see, prism just means we have a cross section. And it is the same throughout the shape. For example, as you can see, this shape is made up of cross section along the way. Now, the depth of water in the container is h, as you can see, is h. The container has length of 5. This is 5 right here. The water in the container forms a prism with a uniform cross section that is an equilateral triangle. Now, something we have to know about this shape is what does it mean if we have an equilateral triangle? So we do know something is that the sides are the same, I agree, and the angle are the same, which means the angle has to be 60, 60, and 60 for this triangle that is formed by the water. Now here the side is x, obviously, which is a known value, we don't know. Now, what do we have to find? We have to show the volume of the water is given to you by V equal to this. Um, so how do you find the volume of water? So by observation, you can see volume is equal to, so volume of a prism. So it says the water in the container forms a prism. Now volume of a prism is the area of cross surface times the length. So volume is area of cross surface times the length. The length we know already is five, so we have to find the area of cross surface. So how would you find that? Now by observation, you can see it is clearly a triangle, right? So how, do you, how, how would you find area of a triangle? Usually we would do half times base times height. We know the height, we have half already, we just have to find the base. Now how would you find this? So let's try by observation, or let's try by using calculation. So here we have the triangle, for example. Do we agree? We have this shape right here. Now the angle here will be what? Because the whole angle here is 60, 60, and 60. This will be just 30 degrees. And this is 90. If this is h, and obviously this is x, and that will be half x. But we don't need that. We just need to form an equation for this one to help us derive this. So in this case, we have this. But obviously we can see the equation itself, there's no x. So we have to find x in terms of h. So let's do that. So here we will have what? We will have... Um, so here we have right angle triangle. We can use so ka to. So ka to. Now this is what side? This is the a side. This is the hypotenuse. So cos of the angle is equal to the adjacent side, which is h, over the value of x, right? So which means x is equal to h divided by cos 30. Now, obviously, we do understand that this is x, this is x, but the base is also x because it is an equilateral triangle. So we can replace. So what is cos 30? 
it is root 3 over 2. We can check, so cos 30 should be this value, which is root 3 over 2. So replace back here, we have the volume is equal to half times base. Base it is x. x is equal to uh, h over root 3 over 2. And then multiply by the value of h right here, right? So this is the height. And then multiply by 5 for the length. So let's simplify. Let's see what, what do we get from this. Um, so we have this right here that will be. So let me express this as easily as possible. We have 5 and h squared. So let's write 5 h squared first. And here we have over 2. And what happens to this when we have uh, this fraction below? If you want to uh, bring this up, it will become 2 over root 3. Again, so 1 over this, we will become 2 over root 3. So this will become this. We have to simplify. This will go away. This will go away. So you will end up with 5 over root 3 h squared. But now we do understand that 1 over root 3 is, as a side note, is also equal to what? Root 3 over 3. Why is that? Uh, let me show you guys why is that. Because if you take 1 over root 3, let's say I multiply by root 3 here and root 3 on the top. Again, when you multiply the same thing on the top and the base, the fraction doesn't change because if you were to simplify, you will have the same thing in the end. So you will have root 3 on top and this will be 3. So we agree. 1 over this is the same thing as this. So from here, we can see 5 is 5, right? And 1 over this is the same thing as root 3 over 3 a square, which is v. And this is shown as required. Again, this is a step-by-step -step solution. It's not uh, the hardest thing ever, but again, we just have to uh, use the, uh, the concepts that we know and also the relationship that we know from the uh, question itself given to you to see what's possible. Again, you can also use uh, the other formula to find area of a triangle, which is half times sine of the angle, which is 60, and times x squared. This is the other way to find the area of a triangle. You will have to find x again in terms of h, and then replace to eventually show this one. Now for part b, water is pumped into the container at the rate of 0 0.5 meter cube per minute. So what is pumped into, which means the volume. So as you can see, meter cube is the volume, right? The volume of water is increasing at this rate, which means we are given dv by dt is equal to plus 0 0.5 meter cube per minute. This is given to you by the question. Now we have to find the rate at which the depth of the water is increasing. So we have to find the h by dt at the rate at which the depth the depth is h so we have to find the h by dt it is equal to so on top here we have dh multiplied by something at the bottom here we have dt now this we use the chain rule too to connect them so what else do we know here we have dv by dt so we will put dv over here and this will match this one so that will be dv over here so in this case, we have realized the formula we have to use will be this equal to this times this. Now, this we know already, it is plus 0 0.5, so we just have to find this. We have to find dh by dv at the value of h equal to, when the depth is equal to 0 0.1 meters. So from above, what do we have? We have the value of v. We have v is equal to 5 root 3 over 3 h squared. So for now, we can first find dv by dh, right? Differentiate, you will have. Send this over here, becomes uh, 10 root 3 over 3 h. Now, we can find the value of dv by uh, dh at the value of h equal to 0 0.1. That will be 10 root 3 times 0 0.1 divided by 3. That is what value? So that is 
0 0.57735 0269. Now again, we don't care about this value because we have to find the h by dv. So we have to flip this upside down, which is 1 divided by answer will be what we need. Now again, this is, an, this is an exact value. So let's use this exact, right, as much as we can. So let me uh, find some space to express this. So basically the idea is we first have dv by dh but we have to find dh by dv so we have to flip this upside down dh by dv will be 3 over 10 root 3 h now replace the value of h at h when h equal to 0 0.1 what happens become 3 over so 10 times 0 0.1 will be just 1 and that will be root 3 and this is just simply uh, the value of uh, dh by dv which is 1 over root 3. Sorry, that will be, uh, or we can just leave this as such for now because uh, we will have to find the value right from this one. So once we have dh by dv, let's use this one for now, no big deal. So we have this right now, we agree? We place h by this, by 0 0.1, times 10 will be just 1, and then you will have this as a value. So dh by dv was found to be this. Now replace back in uh, your equation, so we have to find dh by dt is equal to dh by dv, which we have seen is 3 over the value of root 3. Now we have to uh, simplify, let's see what can we do, times the value of 0 0.5, which is half. Again, you can always express this as an exact value, which is what? This is half, that should be 3 over 2 root 3. But again, you can always express this as a decimal. So 3 divided by root 3 uh, divided by, by 2. Or you can do 3 divided by 2 times root 3. That will be 0 0.866. And the height, this is uh, the height, that will be meters per second. This is obviously the uh, answer correct to 3SF. You can always write the exact value as well for your answer. And that should be your question number 9. I think the most tricky part here will be to find the value of x, which is the base, right, in terms of h. And then here we just have to play with the formula for it to make sense. Um, and then step by step find the value of, of what we need according to the equation. Again, we have to use a chain rule here. We have to know the given value, which is this one. And then know what we are trying to find. And from this, we break it down. dh on top, dt on the bottom. And we have to find the connection between those two to have that. And then this we know, we have to find this. To find this, we have to use this equation. And then step by step, try to find the value at h equal to 0 0.1, then substitute to find the answer in the end. That is your question number one. So let's move on to question number 10. So part A, we have to differentiate this one with respect to x. So d by dx of this, so one by one d by dx of this whole thing, x ln of x minus 2x. Now we don't have to realize that for the first one it is a product, x times ln of x. So we have to use the product rule. So let's do this. So first one will be the same times d by dx of this one will be 1 over x. And then plus the second one will be the same times the d by dx of this one will be just 1. And then minus d by dx of this one will be just 2. Now simplify. This will cancel out with this. So we have 1 minus 2 will be minus 1. So you will have ln of x minus 1. This is part A of your question. All right, so let's move on to part B. So we have a curve where we have d to y by dx3 equal to this. It is given that dy by dx is equal to this at this point. Now the point, obviously, this is the x value and the y value. So we have to know, if you have a point, let's say a and b, this is the x coordinate and this is the y coordinate. We have to know that uh, for any questions, right? Now, uh, here, what can we do with this? We can try to simplify before proceeding. For example, if I were to simplify this, I can say what? I can, here we have power of 2, we have fraction. I can break this down, we have x plus 1 
power of 2 divided by root of x power of 2. So it can be like this. Now we can obviously expand. That will be what? That will be x squared plus 2x plus 1 over the value of x, right? So square root square will be just x. Now simplify. This will be divided by x will be x plus 2 plus 1 over x. So finally, d2y over dx2 has to be x plus 2. We can send this up, that will be x power minus 1. All right. Um, yeah, so we don't need to, but if you want to, we can, right? Now, uh, let's move on to the question itself. So we have all this information. We have to use your answer in part A, so recall this. You find the exact equation of the curve. Now, equation of curve is the value of y. So how do you find y? So something we know we have to know here is whenever you see this kind of question, dy by dx, d2y by dx2, and then find the equation of curve, we have to know something as such. We have to know that to find dy by dx, I have to integrate d2y by dx2. And finally, to find y, which is what we need to find the equation, we have to integrate dy by dx. All right, step by step. So first, we have to first go through this one. We have to find dy by dx, the expression. So dy by dx will be integration of x plus 2 plus 1 over x with respect to dx. That will be x squared over 2 plus 2x and plus ln of x, right? So 1 over x integration will be ln of x. Now, of course, we have to write plus c for the constant of integration. Now, we have to find this value. How do you find this value? We have to use this given to you. So it means when the value of x was exponential, we know according to the question, dy by dx is given to you by exponential square over 2 plus 2 exponential. So replace back in the equation to find the value of c. So this was this exponential over 2, square over 2, plus 2 exponential is equal to. So replace x by exponential, that will be exponential square over 2, plus 2 exponential, plus ln of e plus c. Now as we can see, these will cancel out. So this and this will go away. If you send this over here, you will just cancel out. And same thing for this one as well, you will cancel out. So we have 0 is equal to ln of e plus c. Now what is ln of e? It is equal to 1. We can check. Ln of e is, is 1, right? So finally, from here, we do realize c has to be minus 1. So conclusion will be what? Conclusion. Hence, we have dy by dx e is equal to x squared over 2 plus 2x plus ln of x minus 1. Now, as we can see here, to find y, which we want to find, we have to integrate dy by dx. So let's, uh, let's try to do that. So we have to find y. We have to integrate dy by dx plus 2x plus ln of x minus 1 with respect to x. Now, first one will be pretty easy. We have to increase the power by 1, that will be 3. And then divide by 3, that will become 6, right? And this one will be 2 squared, divide by 2. And this one, how do you integrate ln of x? And last one will be pretty easy, so it will be minus x. But we have to find this one. So in this case, in all level, we, we don't learn by parts yet. So we have to use, remember? using part a to solve this so let's find this one how would you find this so in part a what do we have in part way if we differentiate this we got this so we do understand that that uh, integration is a reverse process of differentiation so what do i mean if i differentiate this i get this but if i integrate this one I'm supposed to get this back, which is x ln x minus 2x. So from here, I can try to find this one. So this whole thing over here will be ln of 
integration of law, integration of ln x. Now we can break this down, become minus integration of 1 uh, dx. Here we have dx2, that will be ln of x minus 2x. So integration of ln x is equal to x ln x minus 2x. We send this over here, become, so what is what is integration of x? of 1, it is x. So we send this one over here, becomes, this was minus x, will become plus x. So that will be x ln x minus x. So from part A, we realize this is this. So let's replace. This was equal to x ln x minus x. So simplify, you will have x cube over 6 plus x squared plus x ln x minus 2x plus d for the constant of integration. So we just have to find the value of d using the point. So we have been given a point which is this exponential and e power 3 over 6 plus exponential square. This is my x value and the y value. So when at x equal to this, so here we have y obviously, remember? What next is this? Why is this? Replace and try to solve for the value of d, which is the missing value. So let's see what happens. So on this side, you will have exponential 6 plus exponential square. That will be exponential cube over 6 plus exponential square plus exponential ln e minus 2 exponential plus d. Simplify. So this and this will cancel out. If you send this over here, you will cancel out. Same way for this one. And we know this is 1. That will be exponential minus 2. So here we have 0, obviously. So 1e minus 2e will be minus e plus d. So d will be e, right? So finally, uh, to find the equation of y is equal to x power 3 over 6 plus x squared plus x ln x minus 2x plus exponential. And this is your value of y, which is the equation that we are trying to find for question number 10. Now let's move on to question number 11. Uh, so here we have a few graphs, let's see. So we have a curve y equal to uh, exponential x uh, over 2 power. You can see here we have this, right? This is this one. And this is this one right here. And we have a straight line, vertical line, which is this one. Okay. Now, uh, obviously, we know this value. This is pi by 4. Now, the uh, curve intersects at A. A is this point on the y-axis, so pretty easy. We have to know on the y-axis, the value of x is 0. So we place 0 here. Exponential 0 will be 1, so it means this value here will be just 1. Okay, just in case we might need this, we don't know. But it's good if you just know uh, the value for now. Now, uh, the curve y equal to cos 5x cuts the x-axis at the point B, at this point right here. So why do you know at the x-axis? We know that at x-axis, the value of y has to be 0. So replace, you will have 0 here, equal to cos 5x. So 5x will be cos inverse of 0. So 5x will be what? Cos inverse of 0, that will be. Here we have to use, obviously, uh, radians. But if you use degrees, you will see the exact value. So you can convert back to radians. That will be 90 degrees, which is pi by 2. Right? So uh, x here is equal to pi by 10. Again, when you use graph, we always, uh, when you have graph area and stuff, we always try to use radians. Okay? So the value here is pi over 10. So what is your question? Your question will be to find um, the exact area of the region A, B, C, D. Now, how do you find area usually? We find by, by observation. You can have a look. Okay, how can we find this area right here? So you will take the whole value, the whole area, A, D, C, O, the whole thing, minus this one, right? So the, well, let's first find the whole thing. How do you find the area of A, D, C, O? You would say this is area on the curve, under this curve, obviously, 
between the limits of this and 0. So let's find the whole area. That will be limits of pi by 4 and 0. And the function is exponential x over 2 respect to dx. This will give you, same thing, exponential x over 2 divided by d by dx of this divided by half. That will be exponential. So this will become 2, right? So divided by half will become 2 exponential over 2. Now we have to have the limits of pi by 4, 0. To simplify, you will have what? 2 exponential pi over 8 minus 2 exponential 0. That will be 2 exponential pi over 8 minus 2. Alright, so that will be uh, the first part. Now for the other one, if you want to find this area, we have to minus this one. So what is this area? This is the area below the curve, cos of 5x, between this and this, right? So let's find this. Pi by 10, and that will be 0, and the function is cos 5x. Respect to dx, that will be sine 5x, divided by 5, and limits of pi over 10, and 0. Let's replace, let's see what happens. So we have sine of, here we have to use radians. Sine of 5 times x. x is pi over 10. That is 1. That will be 1 over 5 minus, here we have sine of 0 will be 0. Okay. So your value here will be 1 over 5. So uh, finally, if you want to find the area of this region, take the whole thing minus this one. So step by step, the whole thing is 2 exponential pi over 8 minus 2 minus this one, which is 1 over 5, for your answer will be 2 exponential pi over 8. So minus 2 minus 1 over 5 is this, which is minus 2.2. .2. Minus 2.2 .2 for the exact value of this. Again, you can express this as a fraction if you want to as well. It should be the same. Of course, you have to write units square for the area. And that will be your question number 11.